you know who should quit? J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Babe, can I tell you, this is this story electrocuted my bones because <laughs> I was there's just things that make sense. You know what I mean? In life where sometimes you don't think like. Oh, that's probably going on. But then like as soon as you you see it, you're like, yes, that could absolutely be what's going on here mm. is. So, you know, J.K. Rowling, we all know her beat, right? It's the transgender this, the transgender that. She is a turf, 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 surf and turf. <laughs> and she had this thing where she. Like. I don't know. She's just been going off. This was, a, we'll talk about this at the end of the episode, but this was a bad week um, to be a woman or to be trans. But I, someone posted a, her profile picture and they pointed out that there appears to be black mold growing all up and down her walls. <laughs> oh. It's so beautiful, isn't it? If you think about it, like the idea that this incredibly wealthy woman who like created something that millions and millions of people thought was like magical and wonderful is now like rotting away, hunched over a computer, just spilling bile, infected by toxic black mold. Well, I mean, I'm of a lot of minds about this because people get very sensitive about when someone does something bad and then someone suggests like, I don't know, maybe they're like losing their mind a little bit or whatever. And people get very defensive. And like, I remember someone yelled at me because I suggested that Roseanne might be experiencing cognitive decline. This is back when she did that Maxine Waters tweet and mm. someone, let's just say I really upset someone who was like, no, like, you know, I know someone who's going through that. Like, how dare you say that? And I'm sitting there thinking like, well, I think I dare say that because what this person's doing is insane behavior. And I don't think it's a wild leap to think that maybe there could be multiple things at play here. Not just that like they are bigoted and all these other things, but maybe they, they've lost their mind a little bit. Mm. And with Roseanne, I'm just going to say it has become very clear that Roseanne is n not home. Like mm -hmm. she's done a couple interviews lately where it seems like she's forgetting why she's there while she's there. And then she'll still make cracks or whatever. But like there's no motor behind it, really, the same way. It's just saying something like you know, not related at all, but like inflammatory. And I look at that and I say like, like this is a person who is also losing their mind. And like Roseanne was so for so long was like none of these things that she is now. Mm. And now this is what she, this is what she does. Like this is, that's to me, there's something weird there. And we know that there's a lot of things that black mold can do to a person. It can make you write a lot of Larry, which is uh, Liam and Harry fanfic from One Direction. Yep. As is my all-time favorite Stan tweet, which I've brought up because I will never miss an opportunity to bring up a Stan tweet. Tell me, t uh, read this this classic for the class, please. It says, life update. Hey guys, life update. So they found a bunch of mold in my dorm vent. And since I've been home and on antibiotics, I noticed how much better I'm feeling. And also feel like I can think more clearly now. And with a heavy heart, I have to admit that being a no stunt Larry was probably the mold talking. Not really sure why any part of that makes sense, especially Louis' fake kid and them both hiring beards for 10 years when they pick their own managers now. Guess black mold can really affect your brain. <laughs> anyway, I'm so grateful for the friends I've made through this community, and I hope you will reach the same clarity as I have. Get your vents checked, everyone. <laughs> I always wonder how real something like that is. Like, <laughs> when you see something like that, because it's so, it's so starkly on the other side of the planet. Do you mind sending me that? It's so starkly on the other side of the planet from 
like what was going on. Like same with like, you know, I, like I'm on mood stabilizers and I no longer stand BTS or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like it's one of those things where I'm like, has this person's heart just not been in it for a while? And they thought like this would be the funniest way to do that. But to JK Rowling's thing, right? Like it's not surprising to me to find out that this like woman who came into incredible fame and fortune in the midpoint of her life might have some hoarding tendencies. I mean, wasn't the thing that she was very poor for quite some time? Like, she was really, like, a struggling single mom. She was a single mom, yeah. And didn't she used to go to cafes to write because she couldn't afford to put the heating on? Yeah, something yeah. like that. I remember my grandfather talking about that when I was growing up because he – um one of the last things he did was read the Harry Potter series. All of them that were out at the time. Hmm. But – you know, I, I'm not surprised that she probably has some sort of general security issues with with having been poor for so long. Uh -huh. And so I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if she was hoarding. I If she is someone who is distrustful on the level that she is, I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't have people come into her home and look at stuff like that. Um, I think also a lot of, you know, it's a little Grey Gardens-y to like just sort of turn a blind eye to this this place that you have mm. and just like be in your own little world. And I mean, black mold or not like the turfism is itself isn't mentally ill, eh? but I kind of do think it is like, there's a very, there's something very <sighs> mentally ill to all of that. I, I think that if you dedicate your life to like one very specific thing like this that is like I mean really quite hateful I mean it's the same with conspiracy theorists really who like allow it to get into their bones and into their blood and it just like colors everything it's it's kind of like the same as well of people who are extremely racist and that just affects everything in their life everything that they can enjoy everything that they can do like it's so myopic that I don't think that it is a, a nice existence to have, to be so like worked up and hateful about something that ultimately doesn't fucking affect you and greatly harms other people. I think that is a form of mental illness. I I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Like it's not, not all meant, not all bigots are mentally ill people and not all mentally ill people are bigots, but like there is, you know, I love Venn diagrams. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like that's like, <laughs> don't you just love them? Um, but it's one of those, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't think it's a tiny sliver in the middle. I think that, you know, same with QAnon, like a lot, like when you have distrust on that level, mm. When you are, when the most comfortable thing for you to assume is that everyone in the world is involved in a pedophile ring and we pay our taxes to pedophiles, <laughs> like, <laughs> when that's more comfortable for you than like, just the thought of like, the world is scary and bad things happen and some people are really bad and, you know, it used to be okay to not be able to put your finger on stuff. Yeah. And now I think everyone just feels like they need to identify it so they can process it. And sometimes that goes terribly wrong. Yeah. I mean, the, the wild thing is as well, like this is a woman with like a net worth of a billion dollars. She could be doing literally anything else. And she is choosing to spend her life in a mold filled fucking room, just like being hateful. And it's so weird to me that that is the choice that she's made. She could quite honestly just shut the fuck up and enjoy her money in peace for the rest of her life and be cool. And I just don't understand why she doesn't. Like, because the thing is, she could be a turf offline and like just quietly hateful. And like, there's nothing anyone can do about that. And that's fine. She can like hold these beliefs deep within her soul, but she could be doing it on a beach and not tell anyone. Keep it in. Well, this is like a little bit of the thing why I always try to like encourage people to stay away from. And this, again, is not a money thing. This is just a general mindset is broke hater mentality. Yeah. Because if you look at someone like J.K. Rowling and you see that she has all these things and this is how she spends her time. 
Like the natural conclusion has to be that money ain't all that. Mm. You know, money, money is not where it's at. And I know it's like easy to say when you're not, you know, struggling to like figure out what to feed you and your kids or whatever. Like obviously an amount of money like that is fine to desire and want. But like the idea that anyone thinks just because you have millions and millions of dollars, like your life is somehow simpler or better. It's just like not right. I just I just don't know how you could like diagnose a situation and come with come back with that takeaway time after time. Yeah. Although that said, if I had her money, no one would ever have to hear any of my lukewarm liberal takes ever again. <laughs> Cause I would simply shut the fuck up. I don't know why as well that like if you've been successful at something, you feel that like the world is just desperately craving and waiting to hear your fucking hot take and opinion. Like, because you happen to write some books, it's like, oh, we must hear what JK Rowling has to say on this fucking, she's like, yes, people have to know. They must want to know. Well, they must want to know from me. In all fairness, like, I do think that unless people are saying something that we don't like, people do want to hear from others. You know, I think we do sort of sit around and wonder like, oh, what's this person's, is this person, do they have shitty opinions or, you know, and I know this is coming from someone who said just not that long ago that I wish Drew Barrymore could just be a quiet person. I don't want to hear about <laughs> just which has been Uber Eats, you know, woes. But, you know, I th I can understand why someone like J.K. Rowling would have an inflated sense of what people how mm. what and how often people want to hear from her i mean have people not before all this were people not begging for more material from her <laughs> yeah and then it wasn't very good yeah what that's why she's so that? hateful i don't know like sometimes lightning is in a bottle and it's you happen to suck up all the stuff in the ether and create something quite magical but you might not be able to repeat that ever again yeah and that's okay just go away with all your money yeah, I mean, I don't know. I want to. I want to get people's read on that because I, I do think that like this has to be a this has to be mental illness. I mean, let's let's go through really quickly what um uh like neurological signs of black mold. <laughs> and also, like, I mean, I'm not diagnosing any specific mental illness with J.K. Rowling. I'm just thinking about like the day-to-day -day impact that existing to try and tear down a, pe a group of people that have been like just treated really poorly, historically marginalized and murdered. It's just, it, it takes like a very special kind of thing going on in the brain there to want to continue doing that every day. When all of the signs, apart from a tiny little echo chamber of people who are shouting really loudly, but from what the majority of people are really kind of pushing back. Although that said, the one thing I do find a little bit challenging in my country is that there, there is more weight given to a quote unquote transgender debate by moderate people than by extremists than there is in the US. So like politically, there are people who are, would generally have pretty sound like middle of the road or even sort of progressive politics that will be really fence city when it comes to trans rights. And I find that just really odd because you can't really annex it off and say like there's a group of really sort of extreme voices over there that are trying to take away people's rights and you know just be fucking awful um it's it's often really moderate people and it's given this sort of like I don't know like it's like it's given the theater of rational discourse sometimes and I I really don't like that because no. it's like, why, why are like, why are we sort of arguing towards, I don't know, why are like rational people having, th having this as if it's a rational conversation? Like it's not like, this is really fucking serious. People are, are, be are really like, they're, be they're being killed and they're, you know, they're killing themselves and they're not getting access to the healthcare we need. So like, why are we just like strokey chin debating it as if this is like some sort of moderate discourse? Like it isn't. 
I know. I think it's that thing where it's like, I don't know. It's like when you're like, it's like going to Thanksgiving with like your crazy relative and like the last three Thanksgivings, you've done a really good job of like dodging their political beliefs and like the things that they just sort of are on a repeat about that like you fundamentally want nothing to do with. Mm. And then like just one year you like fucking snap. And like, I think that that's like where we are now where it's like the rhetoric is so nonstop that it's like, of course. And I think also like people who have compassion, like a lot of times we'll see stuff, see stuff like this. Where people are just making like really harmful, blatant things. And part of them is just like, let's just like course correct, you know, let's like, like see if I can stop the loop here, the cycle. But also it's about like, you want people to know that you're going to stand up for them. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You want, you want people in your life who are like affected by comments that are bigoted to know that like, don't worry, I've got this because Mm -hmm. like it's, exhausting as it is for like you or me like I can't even imagine actually being on like the receiving end of hate like that and for just existing in the world for just existing and like being on the receiving end of that sort of hate unconditionally nonstop, and like you know it's like I under I understand why people are tired and I Mm. feel like okay well I don't have to get up and fight this battle every day. So like today I'll clap back at someone or whatever. That's Mm. like very low effort for me to tell a bigoted person to shut the fuck up. And, you know, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's really sad. Yeah. 